But as the finishing touches are being made on BC Place and Sunday's game plan against the Portland Timbers, are the players and coaches excited at the prospect of running out onto the field on what's being described as the crown jewel of Canadian sporting venues? Seeing everything, it's going to be outstanding experience, not just for players, but for the fans' perspective. And, um, being right downtown, um, I think we can create a, an atmosphere that's second to none. I always look forward to playing an Empire with the, with the fans that we get, but opening day is probably the, definitely the highlight. Yeah. It's going to be the highlight for everyone. Captain Jay Demerit, who's had a trying time this year battling injuries, has witnessed renewed hype in the city surrounding this upcoming contest. It seems uh, there's a bit of a buzz going for the game, and, and we're hoping to get uh, uh, some new fans out. You know, again, we've had amazing support so far uh, this season, and at Empire especially. And uh, if we can now, since we're downtown, grab a few more fans that are in the neighborhood, you know, the more the merrier. Though the stadium might be rocking Sunday, it's up to the Whitecaps to try and mask their excitement and focus on picking up the victory. Connor Hammond in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. A local watering hole in Burnaby is packed Saturday afternoon. These aren't your regular bar patrons. They come from all walks of life. Uh, I'm John Knox, president of the Vancouver South Siders, and in my day job, I'm a private investigator. Hi, my name's Shane. Um, I'm a retail consultant and a sales rep in the sporting goods industry, but I'm also the South Sider secretary. All bonded to the hip by their love of the beautiful game. A staple of the Whitecaps fan base, the history of the Southsiders dates back to 1999. This is when a small group of fans gathered at Swangart Stadium on Boundary Road. We were people who enjoyed standing, singing, chanting, the traditional British or European style of support, but we didn't fit in with the mold of the family-friendly soccertainment sort of model that was so prevalent throughout North American football during that time. And uh, to be perfectly honest, people sitting around us at Swangard found us to be a nuisance. They didn't want to hear us sing. They didn't want us standing up and blocking their view. They didn't want flags waving around all over the place. So they were complaining about those guys. Those guys that are causing all the problems. We got fed up with it and moved out of the grandstands and started congregating down in the beer garden behind the south goal. And it just seemed to be a place where it naturally evolved into party central. If you liked having fun at a match the way we did, it was very clear from any vantage point in the stadium that the south side was where he had to go. Over the years, the group has grown in members and is now an extension of the Whitecaps club. But according to Knox, it was by no means a smooth transition. One of the things that had happened with the south Siders is that the garbage cans in our section disappeared. They were no longer being placed in our area so if you were a fan watching a game and you wanted to toss away your beer cup you had to walk out of the section to get rid of it by which point ten people have taken your spot along the fence. So as sort of a silly sort of protest against what we felt was the marginalization of the South Siders, people began just dropping their beer cups onto the over the fence onto the pitch. Not onto the field of play but just over the fence line. But issues were resolved and the lads settled back on the fence line with an earshot of the opposition. One keeper in particular, uh, his, his girlfriend left him for um, Nick, what's, I forget his last name, but Nick from the Backstreet Boys, she left him for that, so we, had, we created a song for that. Another guy got uh, caught drunk driving, so we'd sing songs about that and shake our car keys. <laughs> Following the Caps joining the MLS, it was clear that a new home was needed to house the inevitable increasing fan base. Not only was the club growing in size, but so were the Southsiders. Now 500 strong, the Southsiders Army makes the trek three blocks from their pre-game booze up to the newly erected Empire Field. I told you, Vancouver, that this was coming. I told you. Taking the blueprint from the fan bases of the mighty European clubs, the Southsiders' catchy chants can be heard throughout the stadium on match day. A staple of Swangard, the voices ring from south side to mountain top. For Red Nation Online, I'm Connor Hammond.
But with the Canucks advancing to their first conference finals since 1994, not everyone in this city is suffering from that familiar spring virus, playoff fever. And it was at one of these rinks that 40 women recently set a new Guinness World Record for longest continuous hockey game. And it was all for the noble cause of raising money for cystic fibrosis. This is Sports on Evolution 107.9. Good evening, I'm Connor Hammond, all mic'd up, and these are your sports headlines for 1010. The Canucks battled the Blue Jackets tonight with new addition Maxim Lapierre in the lineup. With four minutes left in the first period, a slumping Mason Raymond put the Canucks up 1-0. The Blue Jackets responded in the second with new addition Scotty Upshaw scoring to tie the game. The quarterback of debatably the NFL's most disappointing team of last season wants out. Carson Palmer, QB of the Cincinnati Bengals, says he no longer wants to suit up for the AFC Central squad for the 2011 season. He has asked owner Paul Brown to be traded only to be denied the request as Brown says he is too important to the team. Palmer said if he's not traded, he will plan to retire. That's your sports to 10 o'clock. I'm Connor Hammond and you're listening to Evolution 1079.